Welcome to another edition of Clearly Conveying. I'm Chris Long, and I'm joined today by Jeff Poe, and we're gonna be discussing some of the pitfalls of trying to adjust the tracking of your belt using take-up frames. We have a lot of customers who routinely do this, Jeff, and what are some of the, the pitfalls and things that they can run into, or what are the reasons why it's so attractive? Well, and it's a good question, Chris. Essentially, three primary reasons why end users or maintenance personnel like to use screw take-up frames to track the belt as it comes around the tail pulley. And, and one is uh, it's easy to do, right? And so uh, compared to other methods of uh, belt tracking, it's very, very easy to just come, in inconvenient I should say, uh, to come around to the back of the pulley, grab your wrench, throw it on the screws, and, and do some turns on the screws. Um, one of the most primary reasons uh, that that they do it is because it's effective, right? So when you do skew the pulley, you can have immediate results. It's very, very effective. And you can literally overcome other tracking issues by putting enough tension in the belt and skewing the pulley enough to, to forcibly make the belt come back to the center. Okay, so oftentimes you're actually covering up some other root causes of the belt tracking because you can generate so much forces with the take-up frames then. I'm yeah, that, that's correct. It, it is uh, very, very effective, uh, especially the more tension that you have in the system, the more effective skewing the pulley becomes. Yes. What's some of the dangers that we run into when we do that? So we actually recommend not to do that, and, and it's for uh, several different reasons. Now, one of them is that it's very, very easy to overload one side of the conveyor pulley assembly. So with that, um, and, and we'll actually uh, do a demonstration and show this in a moment, but with that, um, when you skew the pulley, you will send more belt load through one side versus the other. And this can shorten the life of the pillow block bearings for a number of different reasons. So from a load perspective, you could increase the load on the bearing 30, 40% compared to the other side. So now this bearing on the skewed side is seeing a lot more load. But in addition to that, when you skew the pulley, the side that's under heavier tension, you'll see more shaft deflection, you'll see more um, seal misalignment. And if you get enough seal misalignment, it could cause your seals to drag and cause the bearing to heat up and cause grease to start to come out of the bearing because the grease is heating up, which would all lead to premature failure of your bearings. Uh, in addition, pulleys are made for symmetrical loads. So when a conveyor pulley assembly is designed, you look at the overall belt load and the left side of the pulley is designed to carry 50% of that overall load and the right side of the pulley is designed to carry 50%. And so when you skew the pulley, uh, most customers don't even think of this, but it actually can cause you some bushing problems. And I think you've seen that uh, quite a bit in the field, haven't you? Absolutely, that's one of the problems we fight all the time. And you'll overcome the, the clamping forces of your bushings and the next thing you know, you have customers who have pulleys walking back and forth on the shaft. So they walk back and forth on the shaft. A lot of times you'll have uh, shaft fretage due to that uh, skewing of the pulley and sometimes you could have bolts break and all of those would lead to uh, less clamping force which then eventually leads to the pulley walking on the shaft. Now, with regards to uh, demonstrating this load because screw ticket frames obviously you don't have a digital readout you know mm -hmm. out there on your conveyor and you really don't know how much tension you're putting on one side versus the other and this brings up a good point uh, excellent point one of the common practices in the industry uh, when it comes to tracking belts around the tail pulleys we mentioned is to just adjust the take up frames but chris how many uh on-site personnel do you know that when they're asked to go out and adjust that take up frame they actually loosen it and not tighten it. Very few. The tendency is always to tighten one side versus loosen the other. And so if you have some tracking issues and from week to week or month to month, you're always sending someone out there to make some adjustments to that take up frame, what could happen very easily just over the time frame of a few months? Well, multiple people are trying to track the belt. Everybody's cranking it tighter and tighter. They're constantly pulling that, that tail pulley further and further back, increasing our tensions. And yeah, you can shoot your tensions up, you can double them. So that's an excellent segue into uh, our demonstration. So for today's demonstration, we're actually located in our training center. We are working on our test conveyor where we have load cells uh, connected to each one of the uh, take-up frames uh, on our test conveyor. And so at this time, we'd like to demonstrate for you exactly how easy it is to overload one side versus the other, or for you to see the difference in load, rather, 
uh, one side to the other with just a few cranks on that screw takeup frame. Let's demonstrate now the uh, effects that you get from adjusting the screw takeup frame on one side versus the other as you tighten the screw takeup frame, you increase the load on one side of the conveyor pulley and it can have a dramatic effect depending on the amount of belt tension in your conveyor system. Uh, today we are actually doing this demonstration in our training center on our test conveyor. We have load cells that are um, mounted to the screw take-up frame so that we can see the load on the left side bearing and on the right side bearing. You can see this on our uh, large screen here to the right. You can look at the load on the left side of the tail pulley and the load on the right. Right now they are approximately within 40 pounds of one another. And with just a few turns of the screw take-up frame, you'll be able to see the differences in the load. Now we're going to move this side of the uh, conveyor pulley one half inch so that you can see how much the load increases with just a very small change in uh, axial location on the take-up frame. Okay, so we just effectively moved one side of the take-up frame one half inch, and you can see that the load on the left side tail pulley went from approximately 700 pounds to 1,100 pounds, um, which can dramatically reduce the life of the pillow block bearing, depending on the, the overall belt tension in the system. Obviously, in our test conveyor, it's, it's lightly loaded. But on conveyors that are out there on your job site, these belt tensions will be a lot higher. And the higher the belt tension, the more of a negative effect you have on the life of your bearings. And not only on your bearings, but as Chris mentioned earlier, uh, on your bushings and your bushing bolts. So uh, this is precisely the reason why you should not use screw take-up frames to adjust the tracking of the belt as it traverses around the tail pulley. There's better ways. Well, Jeff, it seems like there's a multitude of reasons why people shouldn't be using their take-up frames to track their belts. But what should they be doing if, for example, somebody has a belt that's tracking off here at their ta tail pulley while they're looking at it, what should they do? And, as, and, and it is a very good question. The first place to start is just to ensure you have good crown on your tail pulley. So all tail pulleys using fabric belts, we would recommend using crown face pulleys. And if you have good crown in your pulley, that should be sufficient enough to enable your belt to track in the center of the pulley as the belt traverses around the pulley. Now there's all these other um, circumstances that can develop that would cause your crown not to be effective. There could be buildup, there could be a crooked belt splice, there could be uh, uh, a, a bend in your conveyor structure, misalignment, uh, a, a host of different reasons that, uh, that could cause the belt not to want to track in the center of the pulley as it traverses around the tail pulley. So the best method would be to use your idlers and adjust your idlers. Now the most effective method in doing that is to first look at the idlers on the side of the belt coming into your pulley. So for example, if we're looking at a tail pulley, the belt's coming into the tail pulley on the return side, so you'd wanna look at your return idlers. And generally speaking, because of belt tension, that first or second return idler may not be as effective as the second, third, or fourth. Obviously, the farther you get away from the pulley as you go um, upstream in this case um, and adjust your idlers, it gives the belt more uh, ability to flex and, and to track and respond to the skewing of the idlers, which is the, the SEMA method. And so we would recommend actually looking at maybe the first three or four return idlers and, and skew those return idlers to get the belt to come across the face of the tail pulley to get it to, to track in the center as it traverses around the pulley. Now, with regards to the carrying side, it's just a little different. Obviously, um, it's going to be more effective if you first skew idlers on the side of the belt coming into the discharge pulley. So for a discharge pulley, what would you recommend? Well, then we'd be looking at the troughing idlers immediately before the discharge, I would assume. Yeah, right. And so again, come back from the discharge pulley because now you're, you're working on the high tension side and the farther you get away from the discharge pulley, generally speaking, the more effective the skewing of those idlers would be. So you, you might want to look at the first five troughing idlers and skew those idlers 
um, in the direction that you need that belt to track to bring that belt into the center of the pulley as it traverses around the, the head end or the discharge end of the conveyor pulley. And one question customers may have is why did I go to all the trouble of, of loosening up all of those idlers and, and skewing idlers uh, instead of just coming back here and turning those take up frames but what they don't realize is by moving those idlers they're not inducing any extra load or force into the conveying system. That's absolutely right Chris. Uh, the, the, the key reason not to use screw take up frames to adjust the belt tracking of your belt as it traverses around the tail pulley is precisely that. It changes the load on your bearings, it changes the load on your conveyor pulley and, and if you increase the, the load high enough, it'll lead to premature bearing failures, it could lead to uh, bushing problems, pulleys walking on the shaft, a host of issues that you'd rather not deal with. All right, well I appreciate your time Jeff and thanks and join us again for our next edition of Clearly Conveying. Let's talk a little bit about what is required when you get on a job site. Number one, PPI field engineers that conduct conveyor surveys every week with different customers. Um, they do have all of their required safety training, MSHA training, OSHA training, 